to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. Before we begin, please like this video and subscribe. Hit that bell to get your free weekly Positive Parenting with Astrology content. So today we're talking about how best to parent your Libra children. So as always, we are going to talk about an overview of Libra energy and then talk about the main things parents should keep in mind when parenting their Libra children and how to connect with them. And of course, we will include, as always, some positive parenting tips to help strengthen your relationship with your Libra child. So do you wanna have a better, stronger relationship with your Libra child? Are they hard to read? Do you have difficulty kind of getting to the bottom of what they're about, what their preferences are, what they think about things? If so, you are not alone and this video is for you. So Libra's is uh, a great sign. I love the sign, it's a sister air sign. Libra is a cardinal sign and a masculine energy sign as an air sign. So cardinal energy, as we know, that means the sign is always intent on moving forward, on achievement, on progression, as opposed to the fixed signs that are more interested in kind of stabilizing things, changing things so they were before. Fixed energy signs typically have a tougher time with transition. Uh, in my house, um, my husband and my son have a lot of Scorpio energy in their charts, and I feel like as the cardinal person, I'm always kind of lighting fires under them to get them going. So if you feel like that, you're not alone. Anyway, Libra is a cardinal energy sign, so it's more of a get up and go energy to the sign. And being an air sign, it is a masculine energy sign. That means that Libra approaches the world more from a place of logic and rationality as opposed to intuition and feeling. Feminine energy signs, the water signs, the earth signs kind of approach the world more from a place of intuitive, intuiting things and feeling things out. Air signs are very detached. Now, Libra is detached as an air sign, but it is very different from its sister air signs, Gemini and Aquarius. Gemini and Aquarius people crave independence. Libra is very relationship oriented. That is the big difference between Libra and its sister air signs. And we're gonna go into that in more detail. So Libra is associated with the seventh house, which is the house of one-to-one -one relationships, especially the relationship with the other, like the main relationship in your life. And when you're a kid, that's typically the parents. Often it's the mom, especially for little kids, because mothers are still largely responsible for the emotional well-being of the household. So Libra people really are more comfortable in relationships. They crave attachment. So you'll see that with your Libra child is all children need attachment, but Libra children really need the kind of daily connection and attachment with the parents. They're always seeking that out. So interestingly, Libra is the opposite sign of Aries, okay? Being opposite signs, they're compatible elements. Aries fire is cardinal fire, Libra is cardinal air. So Aries is associated with the first house. It is all about the ego, the self. It represents the phrase, I am. Aries people assert themselves on the stage of life. They are um, generally more concerned with, with what they want than what the other person wants. It is harder for, for Aries and other fire signs to step outside of themselves and see things from another person's point of view. It's not impossible, okay? It's just more difficult. And being ego-oriented is not necessarily a bad thing, as we'll see. The other extreme is, is bad too. So Libra is the opposite of that. Libra represents, as we said, associated with the seventh house, it represents the other and the phrase you are. And the main problem with Libra people and Libra children is that they will often repress their own wants, needs, preferences in order to avoid conflict and just go along with whatever the other person wants. But ultimately, over time, that becomes unfulfilling because they are not getting their own needs met. And we're going to talk all about that. So the first main thing you need to keep in mind is that Libra people, including the children, largely define themselves by relationships they identify very strongly with the relationship and with the other person in the relationship. So as children, they identify very strongly with the parents and they are inherently people pleasers. Now, a lot of parents think that it's good to raise a people pleasing child. However, that is not our ultimate goal. Instead of raising children, especially Libra children, to be people pleasers and kind of always try to please and go along with what the other person wants, 
We should be raising them to assert themselves, stand up for themselves, state their needs, speak their truth. And if what they want, what they need is not consistent or conflicts with what the other person wants and needs, then you engage in a conversation and you ultimately reach a mutual beneficial outcome. In other videos about Gemini children, I talk about the natural Gemini inclination to negotiate. And a lot of parents think, oh, I should never allow my child to negotiate with me. You know, I should tell them this is the way and that is the way. No room for negotiation, no room for other interpretations. That's not what I teach. I think it's a good thing to teach kids to negotiate, right? And especially with air signs, especially Gemini, they're natural negotiators. A Gemini child is not gonna not negotiate. They're always going to wanna negotiate. And Libra, so with Libra, and remember the symbol for Libra is the scales, right? The scales of balance. Libra loves harmony and balance, is always seeking harmony and balance. So when you allow your Libra child to self champion and assert their needs, and then engage in a conversation about how can we each get our needs fulfilled here, that is ultimately very consistent with what Libra is all about, which is the harmony and balance and give and take in relationships. So to sum up that point, it's not about teaching kids to be people pleasers. It's about teaching kids to self champion in a respectful way. And then you talk about how we can get to a mutually beneficial outcome. And I just want to throw in there, as I've mentioned in other videos, raising children to be people pleasing and to repress their own wants, needs, desires, preferences leads to a whole host of problems in adulthood, including very poor boundaries, enmeshment, and codependence. And you'll see that often with Libra kids, if you pay attention, you'll see them often not speak up for themselves and not even state their preferences and not even answer direct questions because they're afraid that what they say, their preferences will conflict with what the other person is indicating and they want to avoid conflict. They do not like assertive, aggressive confrontation and, and they do not like conflict. It's very similar to Gemini in that respect. And also Libra children, they're afraid of rejection, isolation, should what they state conflict with what the other person states or wants. So as we mentioned earlier, Libra children need to attach very strongly to the parents. So attachment is always important, okay? For some signs, a little bit more than others, you can have a very independent sign like Aries or a, sign, a very uh, reliable, autonomous sign like Capricorn that are very comfortable taking on independence and don't need to be joined at the hip with the parent all the time. Uh, Libra really needs attachment. They, for Libra, young Libra children need a lot of touch. They need to be kind of in physical contact with the parent, especially with the mom when they're very young. So what happens if you don't, if the parent does not create the space for attachment, if the parent um, kind of acts in a way that doesn't nurture the attachment, if they're too busy to spend time with the children, if they reject the child's attempts at connection, if they criticize the child when the child shares something, all those things kind of work against the attachment and the connection that we want to build with our children. Obviously ignoring the child, those things. So when, when the child doesn't attach well to the parent or when the child's attempts at attachment and connection are rebuffed or rejected by the parent, the child runs the risk of attaching to other people, especially their peers. And Gabor Mate wrote a wonderful book on called uh, holding on to your kids about attachment and how it is essential that parents maintain attachment and connection with children even through the adolescent and teen years now it's one thing and he makes this point in the book it's one thing for kids to have relationships with peers they obviously should be having friendships healthy friendships with their peers but they should not look to their peers for guidance and advice over the parents instead of the parents they should still seek guidance and attachment from the parents so his book is all about how society kind of works against that parental attachment as the kids get older and how parents need to continue to cultivate it. So my point is you need to continue to cultivate the attachment with your Libra child. It begins when they're born, the holding them, the responding to their needs. And then when they're older, you know, talking, when they approach you to talk about things they're interested in, things like that. I, I will throw this out there. I'm in many parenting groups on Facebook and I'm in one and uh, some of the parents, some of the moms in there said they're tired of hearing the kids talk about Minecraft, that they're just saturated with hearing about Minecraft and they have a rule in their house, no talking about Minecraft. I don't think that's a good idea. If the kids are interested in Minecraft and they're approaching the parents to talk to them about what they did and what they built in Minecraft, 
let them talk to you okay let them speak it's the parent a parent whose children approach them of their own accord to initiate conversations and share things with them is a very lucky parent so by saying you can't talk about minecraft that to me just signifies rejection to the child and that their likes are stupid and their likes don't matter i don't agree with that you part of fostering the attachment is allowing the children to approach you and ask you questions and talk to you about things they're interested in and if they're talking your ear off that's fantastic they want to talk to you they're seeking the connection right so you should always be uh encouraging your kids to talk to you about all kinds of things even if they're things that you're not particularly interested in okay so libra is ruled by the planet venus now it's important to note that venus is also the ruler of taurus so in traditional astrology venus ruled taurus and venus also ruled libra so venus is the planet that um, kind of rules our one-on-one -on -one relationships, the give and take, how we deal with the give and take in relationships, how we show up with really in relationships, including friendships. And that's what Libra is all about. In fact, if you have in your natal chart, the placement Venus and Libra, if the planet Venus was in the sign of Libra when you were born, that's widely regarded as one of the best placements in astrology especially for relationships my son and my husband both have that placement and that's definitely helpful in the give and take in relationships one thing i've noticed is they are both better than me they are both really good at their reciprocity in relationships and they're good at communicating they don't always find the exact words to articulate what they want to articulate but as far as the impetus to communicate and the desire to communicate and maintain connection with the other person in the relationship, they're very good at that. So that's a very good placement for that. So if your child has that placement, which if they have the sun in Libra, it is highly possible that they have the Venus in Libra placement too. That bodes really well for your overall attachment and relationship. So this is all obviously good stuff. Bodes very well for the relationship. The Libra placement, the Libra energy, supports harmony in relationships and it supports attachment and connection for parent-child relationships this is all great stuff so the the kind of the downside of this is this libra as we said identifies very strongly with the relationship and with the other person in the relationship so while the air energy gives it that ability to detach and see things from the other person's point of view which is fantastic libra people run the risk of identifying with the other person so much that they repress their own needs. And they can even kind of lose sight of themselves and who they are and forget who they are and forget, you know, what they are all about as people and as individuals. And that is what you ultimately want to avoid, okay? So here are some ways to kind of foster the, a healthier dynamic with your Libra child in this respect. So you want to obviously foster autonomy and self-reliance and independence in your Libra child so that they grow up into adults who are capable of speaking their truth and voicing their needs in relationships. So encourage them to speak up for themselves. And if they say something that is not consistent with your thoughts or your preferences, let them, let them make the statement and do not overreact. If they say something either in disagreement with what you said or that they don't want to do something or whatever respond with calm okay and tact and do not overreact when they tell you that you should always be encouraging them to speak their truth stand up for themselves even when it makes other people uncomfortable and even if it makes the parents uncomfortable remember we are not responsible for other people's feelings libra people and libra kids largely feel responsible for the feelings of the other person in the relationship and as parents we need to teach them you are not responsible for how that person feels okay you know, if you said something that ultimately hurt their feelings you can apologize right but you are not responsible for their feelings it is not up to you to make this person happy if they're upset, okay? So that's the kind of thing that you, you want to be emphasizing with them. They should always be permitted to express their likes and dislikes and preferences. And ask them direct questions. Ask them about their preferences. Ask them, hey, I haven't heard you speak up. What's your preference about what we have for dinner tonight? Or what movie would you like to see? Or what activity would you like to do today? I haven't heard you say anything. Do you have a preference about this? solicit their opinion because as parents you know 
if the child is not speaking up for themselves, it's too easy to just assume that they are okay with what's happening. And with Libra people, Libra children, you cannot assume that. You cannot assume that they are okay with what's happening just because they haven't expressed something to the contrary. They may be holding that in because they're afraid of upsetting you. So solicit direct input from them and ask them pointed questions. And another thing you can do is ask them hypothetical questions. These are great because there's no pressure to like make a decision. It's not like you're asking them, what do you want to order now? Or what do you want to do now? Or when are you going to be ready? When would you be ready to go do this? You're not asking them to make a decision about something now. And for air sign people, we always feel pressured when we have to make a decision like right now. It's, it's too hard. I don't know if I'm going to make the right decision. So when you're asking them hypothetical questions, like what would you think if this happened? Or how would you feel if this happened? Or solicit their, you know, their opinion about some hypothetical situation. Those are great because there's no pressure to make a decision now. They can take time to think about it. If they say, oh, I don't know, I have to think about that. Oh, well, think about that. I'd be really interested in what you think because I value your opinion. So those things are great to ask them because they're, it's like you're prepping them to think about things on their own. So in, later in life, when they're older and when they're adults, that they can make decisions for themselves and not just go along with what the other person wants. Now, Libra children are often referred to as good children or well-behaved children. In, fa in fact, I gotta tell you, I hate it when I hear people say, oh, that child is so well-behaved or he's such a good child or he's such a difficult child. I hate that because there are no bad kids, okay? Yes, behavior can be challenging, but 99% of the time when I hear somebody say that's a difficult child or that's a challenging child, what they mean is that child actually speaks up for themselves. That child doesn't just like kowtow to whatever they're told, right? That child actually self champions. And that's what you ultimately want as a parent. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy for you, right? But it's ultimately what you want to raise an adult who is independent. So this is my big issue with this. As we said, kids who are taught to please everyone, right? without speaking up for themselves, run the risk of growing up into adults with a whole host of emotional and psychological issues. Poor boundaries, sometimes no boundaries, it's even worse, enmeshment, codependence, all this stuff. And it's not like children who are taught to people please, they don't grow up into adults and automatically self-champion, right? This is all begins in childhood. They don't just automatically wake up and be like, oh, I'm gonna stand up for myself. That takes years and decades to realize that Hey, why am I the one who's always getting the short end of the stick here? Why am I the one who's always sacrificing instead of the other person? That takes years of self-discovery. Ask me how I know that. And I hear parents say fairly often, well, I want my kids to stand up for themselves with other people. I just want, I just don't want them to argue with me. It's okay to argue with others about what they want, blah, blah, blah. But I don't want them to argue with the parent. I just want them to accept my word as gospel and that's it. That's not how that works, okay? The relationship the child has with the parent and the relationship the parents have to each other are the model relationships the child takes forth into adulthood, always. So if you really wanna know how your child is gonna behave in relationships as an adult, look at your relationship with your kid, look at your relationship with your partner, okay? That's the key. So if, if you're teaching the child to always repress their wants and sacrifice themselves, that's how they're gonna behave as an adult, okay? That is how that works. Ask any childhood development expert. So I know a lot of people who watch this channel, like me, you know, come from a background of childhood trauma where we were taught to repress, you know, our needs. So I want you to take a look at your behavior as an adult and ask yourself how many of you were taught to just comply and obey as children? How many of you, when you tried to explain yourself and explain why you were doing something, were shut down by the parent and told by the parent, stop explaining, I don't wanna hear it, it doesn't matter. How many of you were told that? How many of you were told to stop talking back? Talking back, I don't like that phrase either. How many of you were told that you were selfish when you stated you didn't want to do something and you wanted to do something else or you didn't want to do what the group was doing? So what was your behavior like as an adult? If those questions I just went over describe your childhood, did you magically stand up for yourself as an adult? Or 
did you have anxiety every time you had to say no to somebody? Did you have anxiety when you had to express a preference that conflicted with someone else's? Did you have anxiety or even fight or flight or fight symptoms every time you anticipated that someone was going to be angry or disagree with you? How many times did you do what the other person wanted to do even if you didn't want to do it? How many times did you do that to avoid conflict, to avoid confrontation? That is what we want to avoid teaching our children, okay? And this is what I feel so strongly about. And this is a risk with Libra children, okay? So if you're the parent of a Libra child, you need to take these things to heart. Okay, um, the next big thing is, like its sister air signs, Gemini and Aquarius, Libra people tend to be indecisive. When they're faced with too many choices, they shut down. And the paradox of choice is very real. We all suffer from that. We have so many options and so many choices that we shut down because it's too overwhelming. So when you're interacting with your Libra child and they're indecisive about something, if you can, you know, if they don't have to make the decision right now or today, you can tell them, hey, you can take time to think about this. I know it's probably uncomfortable for you to have to make a snap decision or have to decide right now. If you need more time, you can take more time. It's no big deal. If they have to make a decision right now, you can tell them, look, whatever decision you make will be fine. I know this is probably, you know, difficult for you and you may feel pressured to make the decision now and it's tough that you have to make the decision now, but whatever decision you make will be fine, okay? So those are the ways that you can make them feel safe with whatever is happening. And as we said, Libra children do not like aggressive confrontation. They do not like conflict. Remember, the nature of air is to go around obstacles instead of confronting them head on. Libra's opposite sign, Aries, is excellent at confrontation and conflict. Sometimes too good. Sometimes the conflicts become too heated. But I will say, Aries people are very good at self-championing. That is a big plus. Aries parents are fantastic at advocating for their kids. I see it all the time. Aries parents don't care about offending other people if they're protecting their children. And I love that. And I take, you know, I take a lot of advice on that respect from my Aries parents friends. But Libra, again, likes harmony and balance. Libra likes everything to be smooth in the home. They don't like conflict and confrontation. So if you find that in your home, a lot of you kind of communicate by raised voices and kind of being aggressive when you talk, you have to pay attention to how that affects the Libra child because that may be really negatively affecting them. They have to feel safe in the house. They have to have harmony, peace, and balance in the house. And to some people, like fire signs, when you kind of raise your voice and as you're talking to, to them, it, it sometimes shows that they're passionate about the relationship or they're passionate about the subject they're talking about. It's not always like in an aggressive or violent way. It's they're showing they're passionate about this that's why they're kind of getting emotionally worked up. But air signs, especially Libra, they don't always see it that way. They almost feel attacked. So you have to be very careful about how you're expressing yourself to your child and also to your partner and to the other children and the people in the household. Because as we've said in other videos, if the child feels attacked, even by you know somebody yelling at them or raising voices or speaking in a very kind of aggressive, overly assertive way, if the child feels attacked and they go into fight or flight mode, the learning and processing centers of the brain shut down. So if that's the case, what you're trying to convey to your Libra child is not getting through to them. They're not learning anything because they're in that kind of hyper aware and hyper vigilant state. So if, if you find that that is you, that you have kind of a very loud or assertive way of communicating with raised voices and things like that, if you want your Libra child to listen to you and retain what you're telling them and learn from what you're telling them, you're gonna have to communicate in a very calm, kind of even-centered way, okay? And if you do kind of get worked up or annoyed with them, it's fine, we're all human, we make mistakes. Just apologize, go calm down and tell them, look, I'm sorry I lost my, my patience, I'm sorry I lost my temper, I should not have done that in front of you. I'm really sorry if it made you feel, you know, less than safe. I'm really sorry if it upset you, but I'm trying my best to be calm, right? An honest, authentic apology for a parent to a child goes a long way. We're all gonna make mistakes as parents. We're gonna lose our temper. I do too, and I apologize to my kid afterward. And that's the important thing, is that you apologize, maybe you hug, and you have this moment of connection, and things are calm, okay? That's okay. Just don't don't dwell on those mistakes. So I'll leave you with kind of the last big topic is 
always respond to your Libra child's bid for connection. If you just really cannot interact what, right then, tell them, hold on one second, I, I really want to hear what you have to say, I just need to finish this, or I'm on the phone, I need to finish this call, I'll be right with you, but I want to hear what you say. That's okay, like, you may not always be available in that moment, but to the extent you can, respond to their bid for connection. If they want to talk to you about their day, listen to them, make eye contact, put your phone away, ask them questions, right? Well, that's very interesting, well, tell me more about that. Or, well, how did that make you feel? Or I'm, interesting, I'm interested to hear what you think about that. Remember, you want to solicit their direct feedback because Libra's not always good about talking about themselves and their preferences. And when they come to share things with you, do not criticize them. Do not try to improve on what they're doing. Like, I see a lot, like, kids will want to share pictures and project with parents, and the parents will respond with things like, well, you could have done this better. You could have put more color in here. You could have done this. Or this, this stick figure could be better. That's... <laughs> That really doesn't help the connection, right? I mean, if your older child is asking you, how can I improve this? Absolutely. Well, I have some ideas, maybe this or maybe that. But if they're not asking you for that input, if they're just sharing a project with you, then respond to the moment by connecting with them that I'm really happy you shared this with me. Like, how did you feel when you were making this? Or how did you feel when you were going through this? Or what did you think about that, right? or, well, I hope you're proud of yourself because you did really good work. Those things, you know, take the opportunity for that, in that moment to connect and strengthen the bond instead of criticizing. Because as I harp on all the time on this channel, when you form this close, positive relationship with your kids, everything becomes easier. Parenting becomes easier. Parenting does is not easy, but it does become easier if you have a solid relationship, okay? So use those moments to help strengthen the connection. So if you're looking for more information on air sign children, I have a whole playlist on how to parent your Gemini child, and I'll have another video out uh, next week. But that is all for today. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments. All right, thank you.